Good morning, everyone. This is Jabeen from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to India Club platform. This morning, I hope all of you are as enthusiastic as I am to watch Sister Shivani with us online today. If I could have just some thumbs up or something to tell me that the voice is audible and clear just before Sister Shivani joins us. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for Sister Shivani to join us. And we will be talking about various different topics today. Of course, the main topic would be what we are going through right now, all of us, and all our worries and concerns. If you have any questions, please post them at the bottom on the comment section. I will just check if Sister Shivani is ready to join us right now. Okay, we are still waiting for Sister Shivani. I hope all of you are doing well, even though you are at home, your spirits are high and keeping yourself busy, um, enjoying the time with your family and your loved ones. Maybe some of you are um, getting that creativity of developing a new hobby or like me myself, I am trying to um, become a master chef, try new, new recipes that are there online. And um, yeah, just trying to make the best and be positive that we will all come out of this and we shall all come out of this very soon. But more than what I'm saying today, I think the words of Sister Shivani are going to be very empowering so, yes, we are looking forward to see what she has to say today about this because she is in India under lockdown in Delhi. So she will be able to tell us more. Um, just waiting for Sister Shivani. Okay, I don't see her yet. So please bear with me. I really hope you all are going to be staying to, tuned to the end to try and benefit from this live conversation that we have today. Let me see. Please bear with me because I am also quite new to this. So, maybe I have missed her request. Just trying to scroll again to see. Okay, here we go. Okay, Sister Shivani, Om Shanti. Good morning. Good morning. This is Jabin from Jakarta. Nice to see you again. Same here. It's a pleasure to have you here with us on India Club platform. Thank you. I would like to first of all thank you for giving us this opportunity. 
sister, you don't need any introduction. But I will just give a little background about you to our audience who are live with us today. Sister Shivani started her journey with the TV series titled Awakening with Brahma Kumaris, which she shared on various topics. And then she traveled the world to impart the knowledge that she has attained. And lately, she has been awarded for the Nari Shakti Award by the President of India, which is to empower women. Congratulations for this, sister. Um, sister, I would like to share with you a little bit about India Club Jakarta. They are a not-profit organization which has about 400 over members and they are always organizing a lot of cultural events and do a lot of social work. Um, we have a lot of Indians living in Jakarta, which are mostly members of India Club 2, and they are business people, professionals, and like all of us around the world right now, most of us are under house arrest, or you can say voluntary lockdown, and all of us have the same worries that what is going to happen, how is this going to end, when will this end? But sister, I would like to know first, how are you dealing and coping with this? Om Shanti. Om Shanti. We are all where we are. We do not step out of our houses. In India, it's not in three lockdown. It's a government decision, which is very, very beneficial for the whole country. And really, we are seeing amazing results because of the efforts put in here. And so we are all at home and we are with our daily practice of meditation and spiritual study and uh, doing the housework, which we haven't done since a very long time. But now we are doing it all on our own daily and of course, we're doing seva, which is through all the platforms available. But uh, daily discipline of self-study, spiritual study, and meditation keeps everyone very energized emotionally. Keeps you emotionally independent, which means untouched by situations and behaviors of people. So really a practice which had been done since so many years for all of us is really proving to us that yes, you can remain calm in any crisis because the situation cannot affect your mind. It may be a crisis outside, which it is, but it cannot create chaos inside the mind because the mind is independent of situations. Yes, yes, sister. That's, that's very good what you said. That was my next question actually, that at this time of distress, how do we de-stress ourselves? First of all, we should not call it a time of distress. Every word that we will use will influence the mind, the energy of the house, the energy of the family. We need to remember that we are going through a global vibration of fear and anxiety. You know, it's not just a city or a country. It's a global vibration of fear and anxiety. And this is going to influence people's minds. So we have to be very careful that all of us take responsibility to create high vibration thoughts and high vibration words. Because even if we just take care of that much, that what we think and what we speak is a high energy vocabulary, we would be raising the country of, we would be raising the vibration of our country and the globe. And that's going to empower many, many minds. That's going to improve the immunity system of many, many people. And that will purify the environment. So that is one aspect which we all need to take care of. So what I understand is even... Sister? I could not hear you. I could not hear you because the network... Okay. I'm sorry, I will repeat myself again. 
what I understand sure. from what you just shared with us is that one individual having an empowering thought, just one, each one of us, if each one of us practices having empowering thoughts, will help the world? It will, because every mind will affect other minds. So it's a ripple effect. You know, it's like take it in the family. If it's a family of four, if all four are creating anxiety, then it's going to escalate the anxiety on everyone's mind. Because one is your own anxiety and one is the anxiety of the other three people you're living with. But if one out of four changes their ways of thinking and creates peace and calm and stability, it will start influencing the other three because you're at a higher vibration and a higher vibration will radiate to a lower vibration. Mm -hmm. so, and we've all noticed that, that whenever there's a situation at work or home, if one person is calm and stable, it has an impact on the others there. But if everybody goes out of control, then the situation goes out of control. So we need one. It all has to begin with one. So one in every house will have an effect on the other two or three. Then the other two or three will shift towards a higher vibration. And this is a ripple effect. Then that will radiate globally. Okay. Okay. That's so nice. The way you explained it was so clear and so good. Um, it's very, very important because mental health of people is getting affected right now. Emotional health is getting affected because yes. their own fear and anxiety, insecurity of the future, and also influenced by the vibrations around them. So just being at home, we don't have to do anything regarding the virus because that's the role of our administrators and healthcare workers. Yes. But at least we can do this much. This is our moral responsibility towards facing this crisis for the world, that we take care of only our thoughts and words. It's not too much to ask for. We just have to do that much. Yes. It will protect but, us, our family, and impact the world. Yeah, but we always try to stay positive and think about the good things. But somehow we begin our day very well. We start our day with having positive thoughts. But the slightest message or a call or some information that we get just brings us right down rock bottom. How do we maintain that, sister? We need to protect ourselves from consuming too much of information from the world. You know, this we have to protect this world. To protect this world and to create another quality of thought in this world, I have to reduce what I'm consuming from the outside world. Because whatever we will consume will then get accumulated in the inside world, which means what I'm watching, reading, listening. So if I keep on consuming content from media and social media and it's all cluttered here, then that will be the quality of our thoughts and emotions. And that's why restrict, be very, very strict what you are consuming from the world right now. It does not need more than five minutes in a day to just update yourself with what is happening in the world and that to only read it. Reading has the least impact. You know, if you watch it, mm -hmm. if you listen to it, then mm -hmm. the same information is coming with a lot of emotions attached to it also. You know, you're seeing the visual. So the visual impact, the audio impact is way higher than a print reading impact in terms of emotions. So if you just read the information, just to update yourself, only read and read only in five minutes, not read many times in a day. So just read it in five minutes, update yourself. You're gonna protect yourself largely because if anybody keeps consuming, what has happened in the last one or two months, because it was something new and we didn't know about it, we were just sending the same messages to each other, everybody. Intention was very pure. We want to send good messages to people. We wanted to you know, tell them what we knew about it. We want to share. But what happened was every mind was only flooded with information of virus. We were not thinking, talking anything else. So then obviously that's what is accumulated here. Now we know everything about it. We know how to take care and we're all taking care. So it's time to shift yourself from that information. So restrict what we are watching, reading, listening, as far as the virus is concerned, and also what other content we are consuming. 
because we are at home most of us are spending a lot of time with television phones social media digital content and if that is of a lower vibration quality which means it's got crime it's got violence it's got all hatred and jealousy and those kind of content then that is not good for the mind right now it's never good for the mind but right now we're already at a lower state so it's not good for our mind at all oh, and Lord. replace that replace that with very pure positive content if you just flood your mind with positive content many many times during the day and let that vibrate even in your house people's minds are going to change and when the mind will change the body will be healthy and when both of them are stable we can overcome any crisis sister it reminds me that when we do the brahma kumari seven day course we are thought that um, by doing meditation we attain powers and right now in my opinion the power to judge and the power to decide is most applicable uh, would you like to highlight a little bit on that to be able to discern what is right or wrong and then to be able to take a decision whether it's for the government whether it's for a business leader whether it's for an elder of a family that what is right for them to be able to discern right and decide right we need a very calm mind mm. we need a very very calm mind even our healers right now because they do not have complete information about the cure of how to handle this virus they have to use a lot of their intuitive powers along with science you know to feel it intuitively that what i need to give to this particular patient because you don't have trials and tested ways of treating so everyone's doing their best everyone's sharing the information with other countries but yet every case would be different and every one how it's being handled will be different so you require a lot of intuitive power right now even business leaders how to take it forward from here how to take care of their people what decision to take about how to go next will require intuitive leadership logical leadership might not work because what we feel would be logically right for the next 2 months 6 months 1 year may not turn out to be right maybe may not but if we intuition if we use our intuition then our decisions will be right so meditation connection with the highest power surrender your intellect talk to god every morning in your meditation share with god your issues because everyone's issue will be different depending on their roles and responsibilities and then talk to god and take that answer ask him to help when nothing else is working at least now start asking him you know we yeah. always try and do everything on our own but right now is really the time that ask talk sit have a conversation it's a one on one personal conversation sit and talk about everything about your life and work and surrender and say you guide me what is the right thing that i need to do and you will get beautiful messages and those will turn out to be right because connection with the supreme and your intuition power calm mind decision will be accurate sister i really am touched with all the points that you gave just now of being in connection with god and how we need to be having a stable mind at this time i would like to talk about more about god um there are a lot of people who feel that only god can take us out of this situation is it right to think that way it's not about god taking us out of this situation it's about we connecting with god energizing ourselves taking the right directions and decisions and then solving the situation where we are you can't just sit and tell god please do something please sort it all out please find a cure please you know get everything back to normal it doesn't work like that it's our karma we have to do the karma so but to do the karma we take the guidance and the power from there and then come into practical life do the karma and solve the crisis 
I have been having these conversations with different kinds of people of late since this pandemic started. And there are uh, different kinds of people who, with different kinds of thinking. Some say, like I said to you earlier, that God, only God can take us out of this. There are another set of people who say, oh, my God will not let this happen to me. I have so much faith in God that this will not affect me. So what happens is they tend to take this whole pandemic very lightly. So what having have faith in God, yes. having faith in God, having feeling that protection around you, having full confidence that nothing can happen to you is a very beautiful thought. Because this will keep you, because it's true, because it's your relationship with God. It will keep you very calm, very positive, absolutely fearless, but at the same time, taking care of what needs to be done. So, you know, faith does not mean we become careless. So we're going to take care of everything that we need to do outside. But with faith, we are fearless. So faith will keep this very strong. But to take care outside whatever we are told to do physically, that's something to do. Faith cannot make us careless. Then that will not work right for us. So faith will make us fearless. But taking care of everything is our moral responsibility. Yeah. Faith, talking about faith, sister, is another very interesting topic that um, you especially have worked with a lot of different people from different backgrounds. So yes, faith in God is something that you have explained it very well, but also faith in people and sometimes faith in circumstances. How do we have that faith in people, especially right now in this time of chaos? To be able to do that, only the mind will have to first be calm. If the mind is agitated, troubled, then the power to understand people, to understand their perspective, to be able to accept what they are saying and doing, that tolerance power will be very low. It's a battery here. Yeah. If it's charged, it will be able to accept everybody, understand everybody, you know, work with every kind of behavior and personality. But if this is depleted, then it needs the world to be its way. So then we will not be able to have faith in people unless they are doing exactly what we want them to do or what we believe is right. So it a lot depends on your relationship with the self. Mm. If our relationship with ourself and with God is very strong, we energize ourselves on a daily basis, then this emotional health is perfect. That automatically reflects into relationships with people. So self-care creates beautiful relationships. Today, sister, although I've been practicing meditation since quite some time, but I find also sometimes it's a challenge to do meditation because meditation is basically like a link or a connection that we are trying to forge. And that link or connection is not happening right now as how it would in the past when I sit in meditation. Just restrict yourself from other information for some time. Mm -hmm. The mind is too cluttered with too much information. That's so that keeps on processing inside. So when that is processing inside, the line is not clear for a higher connection. So that's why, because last one month, we've consumed too much information of a low vibration. It's the truth. It's a crisis. We want to know about it. But it's not a very beautiful situation that we go on consuming content about it. It's all a low vibration, whether it's talking about the disease, the impact of that disease. It's talking about death. It's talking about economy of the country. Everything is a low vibration content. And consuming, a, it's like having a toxic diet for one month. That's a good example. So if for one month, yeah, if for one month I keep eating the toxic diet, a negative diet, it will definitely have an impact because it's not been a day or two days. It's been more than a month, more than a month, actually. So just detoxify, which means stay away from information for some time. And most important, flood yourself from an opposite quality content.
So flood yourself with content of faith and surrender and positivity, health, perfect, beautiful world. Just keep putting that inside. When this will be silent, then we will be able to connect up there. Sister, um, is there an underlying message that this pandemic is bringing you? but we are still not able to decode it or understand it. I personally feel it's only giving a message that we need to take charge of our lives. For the last two or three decades, we've been literally running. Sorry. We were not at a normal pace, you know? So we've been literally running and we've been making work our priority we said we didn't have time for our own self, for our body, for our relationships. So work, which was a part of life, had suddenly become life. You know, everything is around work. Yes. So if you say to somebody, meditate for 30 minutes in the day, they say no time. Exercise, okay, when I will find time. We all were guilty that we're not spending enough time with children and with family because work was taking up all the time. Work is important, but we need to remember work is a part of life. Work is not life. It's a part of life. So it's mind, body, family, and work, four parts of our life. But if we ignored the first three and said work, 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 right from early morning when I wake up, I first look at my work emails. Till I go to sleep, I'm again connected to emails and messages of work. Then work has overpowered my life. And so the learning from this is that mind and body need to be healthy. If these two are fine, we will face any situation in our life. And so what we need to take back when we go to normal life, first we begin now, but when we go to normal life also, keep an hour for ourselves every morning. Not as an option, not when we find time, but as a lifestyle that this one hour every morning is my fixed time for my emotional charging for my spiritual study for my meditation so that i am my best self here always emotionally independent of situations and people so if we do it now when we are in this lockdown and we have the liberty of changing our lifestyle changing our sleeping habit waking up habits so let's do it right now. And uh, when we get back to normal working, you know, the system would have reset. It's going to be like a reset of a system. It's like when everything hangs on the computer, just do control all delete and reset. So yes. this is the time to reset our life. And when we get back to normal working, we would be with a different lifestyle. So we would be early to bed, early to rise, begin every morning with study and meditation, eating right, eating sattvic food, vegetarian food. So literally all spiritual principles we would be able to integrate into our life if we practice it right now when we are at home. Okay. Thank you, sister. That is wonderful. And also, I would like to ask you, many women and also modern men are responsible for the care of their home and their family members, like cooking, like what you said very correctly just now, cooking and well-being, etc. We need to have tolerance because right now the family is together 24-7. And women need a lot of tolerance, humility, flexibility. What can you share to boost the spirits and give them some motivation at this time? It's very, that's again, it's going to come back to energizing yourself every morning. If you get up and just get into activity, it's like you want to use your phone without charging the phone. Mm -hmm. A phone can do so much for us today. A phone is for communication, a phone is for emails, a phone is for camera, a phone is for movies, a phone is for music, phone is for online shopping. A phone can do everything, but only when it's charged. Yeah. The same phone not charged is just a box. It can do nothing. So, you know, that's how important that charging is. So similarly, the human mind, it can create beautiful feelings. It can create a perfectly healthy body. It can create beautiful relationships. It can create a great world if this is charged. And if this is not charged, then it's creating depression here, disease in the body, 
divorce in our relationships, conflict in our relationships, and we know what's happening in the world. So if we charge this mind daily, we can create happiness, we can create health, we can create harmony, and we can create heaven on earth. That's the power if we charge our mind every day. So just take the example of the phone and how much ever you want to use it, you will still have to give it time to charge. Similarly for the mind, for the soul, we need to charge it daily. So maybe not only in the morning, during the day, we just need to charge again and again as we feel yeah. that we are depleting. Yeah. Because right now, yes. Yes. Yeah. Because right now we have the time, the flexibility to do it. Right now we are in a more emotionally depleted environment collectively outside. So right now, it's like, you know, if you use the phone too often, then you cannot charge it only once in a day. Right. So then we charge it multiple times in the day. Most of us carry our power banks with us. So because we need to charge it many times in the day because born is the time where charging once in the morning would have us be able to use the phone till we reach home late evening. So that's not happening right now. So the time has changed. So similarly, right now, the vibration has changed. So just the morning, if it's not enough for you, then keep on revising it during the day. Take your pause, connect again. Has to be done at least, you know, once midday, then once late in the evening. And at the Brahma Kumaris, we have a very beautiful system called traffic control, where we pause for a minute every hour. That one minute every hour also is amazing experience for the soul power. One minute every hour, pause, check what's going on, change, and consciously create a right thought what you have decided to do. Yeah, sister, the example of you giving just now that of the phone and the phone battery needs to be charged. And especially, like you said, the power bank that we need. So just like a power bank. So when we are charged, which is the power bank is also needs to be charged to be able right. to charge the phone. So me, Absolutely. especially like, for example, I'm a mother and my children are away far away they are abroad right now and when sometimes i'm positive i think okay they are good they are there at home with my aunt who's taking very good care of them they are in good hands but at the same time i feel sometimes there is one thought just one thought that comes that just tests my resilience at that time what so at that I time do? it's like when you create those thoughts at that time, you just need to pause and sit that time for two minutes in meditation and consciously change your thought. They are safe. They are protected. God's blessing is a protection shield for them. I cannot protect them. It's his energy which will protect them right now. So for me to feel, oh, they should have been at home with me, they would have been better or safer, is a thought of attachment and ego. Uh -huh. Every soul has come with their destiny. Have faith in their destiny and radiate only blessings to them. That God's taking care of you. You're protected and safe where you are. That's the best for you. Because where they are is the best for them right now. Yes. We feel if they would have been with us, it would have been better, but not necessary. Yeah. Not necessary. Yeah. So their destiny is going to keep them safe by keeping them where they are meant to be right now. Sister, I like the saying in Hindi that is Kushi uh, Jesa Kurak Nahi. There is no nourishment as happiness. And one of your books that you have written, Happiness Unlimited, has personally played a major role in my life. I really enjoy that. And especially at this time, I tend to take a point or two from that. Happiness makes us feel light. And I think that is what we need at this time. Right. What do you have to share on happiness? Happiness is when we will energize ourselves daily and create the right thought in every situation. Stress is our wrong thought. Happiness is the right thought. Fear is our wrong thought. Faith is our right thought. Expectation is a wrong thought. Acceptance is a right thought. Anger is a wrong thought. Patience is a right thought. So when we are creating the right thoughts, we're going to be happy. 
we don't need anything to happen for us to be happy we just need to be creating the right thoughts always in every situation to be happy so we could be very happy right now sitting at home in a lockdown for nothing working for us outside but if you're creating the right thoughts we could be very happy probably happier than what we've been before before yes sister this is another question that has come in because we have a lot of questions that have been sent to us some from members and some from just the general public um there will be a change or a transformation maybe is the right word here after this virus is in control people will start to go out and do their daily duties and probably wearing a mask or sanitizing will be a part of their daily routine and daily attire so sometimes when we go out in the future there will be a person who coughs or sneezes and the reaction that will be there from the people around that person they might just not react in an appropriate manner so what awareness do we create from now to be able to adapt to that if we keep a very positive mind now then we will be prepared to come out as the best version of ourselves when we start interacting with people so if suppose i cough or i sneeze and somebody around me reacts and you know that's a very involuntary it's just a reaction they did not mean to speak that way but their fear their anxiety of a couple of months takes over and they react so if i am the one who's coughed i should have compassion understand i understand that your reaction is coming out of fear it's nothing personal it's not about me it's about the fear that has accumulated in your mind for so many months so i understand you so i will not get hurt with that reaction i will not feel rejected by that reaction it's like okay i understand so much of has happened and we've gone through so much so i understand you're scared and so that's why you are reacting on the other hand the other person the people around me if i cough immediately we need to create a thought everything is perfect they are healthy they are safe i am healthy i am safe we have a choice what to think instead of thinking oh what if if they have it if they have it then even i have got it if i have got it then my family would have got it it's always a choice whether to create these four thoughts or to create the other four thoughts keep your distance wash your hands use the mask but don't create the thoughts oh what if they are positive then i have got it and if i have got it then these people are... these thoughts are not necessary so you wash your hand wear the mask and create a thought they are healthy they are safe i am healthy i am safe for a few days if we create those thoughts then that will become the normal way of thinking for the mind and it will never create panic thoughts in a situation like that it's just about training the mind to think right yes sister this is uh, it's like it's me. like it's like many of us bless people when they sneeze right yes yes initially yes. initially we used so, to say that bless you yeah yeah so now we just continue doing that that's all okay. it's going to be just like that just create a thought you're perfect you're healthy god's blessings with you finished yes it will yes. become very normal very very normal if that's inside your as a belief system and a practice before the situation comes so what i understand sister is you are saying the power of manifestation right or the law of attraction what we create right now will come to us we are attracting it which i strongly believe in it because i have over and over again tried it tested and it has worked wonders for me and even when i share it with my children when they tell me about their work or colleagues and i always tell them manifest manifest it they're like oh there goes our mother you know with her lecture but yes power of manifestation so would it help right now for us to manifest a bright and a beautiful future a world yeah. and we our business and the economy yes yes we need to create our affirmations right now it's sankalp se siddhi 
thoughts manifest. So we need to create our right thoughts, which means I am a happy soul. I am a powerful being. I am a fearless being. My body is perfect and healthy and will always be. My business is safe. And this year and in the next year, I'm going to do business which I've never done before. It's going to be better than my previous years. And keep a figure for yourself what you want it to be. Instead of thinking and talking about, uh, you know, having to ask people to leave or having to reduce their salaries, say I'm going to be hiring more people this year because my business is going to grow so much. I will need to hire people. I will be increasing people's salaries this year. It's a choice what you want to think and talk. Because what we think and talk influences our destiny. And then most important affirmation, God's blessings and powers is a circle of energy around me. So visualize a white light circle around you, around your family, around the country, around the globe. And one thought, this is my protection shield. Nothing, absolutely nothing can enter into this circle. And do that circle many, many times during the day. So affirmation for your feelings, affirmation for your health, affirmation for your business, and affirmation for your protection and protection of family, country, and world. And if we do that about 10 to 15 times in the day, we would need to repeat and visualize that at least 10 to 15 times in a day, which means first thing in the morning, last thing before going to sleep, every one or two hours for a minute, and specifically when we eat or drink water, tea, coffee. Mm -hmm. We need to pause, energize our meals and water, pray and say our affirmation, because what the vibration of food and water has a direct effect on the mind. And right now, the food and water would be carrying energy of vibrations of fear and anxiety because it's in the air. Yes. So do not eat or drink without pausing for 10 seconds to energize the food and the water with your affirmation and prayers. That's very, very important for a calm mind right now. Sister, you have this virtue of explaining with such ease and clarity it just makes us feel so uplifted. This is what Jakarta has been waiting to hear from you today. And whatever you shared today has been very, very useful. And definitely, I'm sure not only me, but the audience which is there together with us today will start practicing meditation. And, and so you can have an online meditation course for everybody there. Okay. You know, since we cannot come to the center to do the meditation course in India, we have started that at most of our centers. So we do an online meditation course for six days. Yeah. And uh, really everybody, whoever we ask is willing to do the course right now. Yeah. Anybody. So everyone's just calling up their friends, family, relatives and asking them, do you want to do this course? And everybody's saying yes. Everybody haven't got a single no from anyone simply because they want to calm their minds and second, because they have the liberty to do it because of time. So both the factors are really very important for us right now. So we should do the online meditation course in Jakarta. Yes, indeed. That's a very good point. Jakarta, Bali and Surabaya. We have yes. centers, Everyone. so definitely I'm sure the sisters or instruments are watching us online today. So this is a good inspiration that you have given that to start meditation online courses. Sister, and online courses have no boundaries of space, city, time, country. So the whole of Indonesia, everybody who wants to do it can log in and start doing the online course. So even yes. where there are no centers, they can also start. Yes, yes, yes. That's a good point. Sister, given your expertise in meditation and helping people find their inner peace, I would really appreciate if you could give us a short guided meditation before we end today's session. I would suggest sure. that each one of us who are online right now and who wish to join us to be as quiet and peaceful in a very peaceful environment. Sit relaxed so that sister can start the commentary. 
and also i will send you a little 5 minute short meditation for the affirmations for this time and you can share it with everybody thank you sir that on would your be amazing that would, yes sure. that would be amazing thank you just breathe in and breathe out three times and relax your body I am the master of this body the creator or if of every thought word behavior I am the creator I am a divine being My every thought is pure and my every word is a blessing. I think and speak only high vibration vocabulary. I am a divine being. I am a powerful being untouched by the energy of situations and people around me I vibrate at the highest frequency I am fearless I have faith in God in my karma and my destiny My body is perfect and healthy and will always be God's power and blessings is a circle of white light around me. Please create this circle around you. God's power and blessings is a circle of white light around me. I'm protected by God's energy. Nothing nothing can enter into this circle. I'm safe and secure. God's power is a circle around my family God's powers is a circle around my country God's power is a circle of white light around the planet the world is safe that thing which has come into the world it's over finished gone to never come again my business my job is safe 
success is certain for me. This is a new beginning to a new way of thinking, to a new way of living, to creating a beautiful new world. It's a new beginning. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. That was very, very soothing, very nice, very uplifting. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. It has been a pleasure to have you here with us once again and reassuring us with your words. This was really illuminating. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.